well, since I've been spending most of my days working from home these days, I decided to take on a little bit of a home project. So I'm kind of a bottled water guy. The water here in my city is actually pretty good. However, I'm insanely picky when it comes to water. So uh, the old place I used to live had what's called a reverse osmosis system, which has a small water tap that you usually mount right to the back of your sink. And it has filtration equipment under your sink that actually handles a lot of uh, mineral impurity and uh, just general water cleanliness um, tasks. So today I'm gonna be installing an RO and I'm just gonna take you along for the ride. This is the unit I chose. Um, I'll link it down in the description. It's actually a very inexpensive five stage. Five stages just means it has five different filters on it. Um, I have already opened this uh, just a little bit, not fully. I actually needed one of the boxes out of here. so. I'm going to fully unpack it and we'll kind of go over everything. Uh, these are actually pretty simple in how they function. So to start with, we have the filter head, which is already preloaded with a ROM and a pack filter. Um, there are a couple of uh, caps, I guess, that we'll have to remove. These are the quick disconnect clips, so we'll have to pull those out first. Hey, buddy. And then we can uh, use that to actually fit our water hose. The filters themselves are actually pre-inserted into these cartridges and they screw in to these three areas here. I will have to look at the order in which they are supposed to be installed. I don't believe it matters very much, um, but I'm guessing you'd want to go with the sediment filter first and then, you know, kind of work your way into finer and finer filtration. In addition to that, there's the faucet that they included. It's actually pretty nice feeling. For the most part. There's the installation kit. The actual hole you need to make is not very big. You do need drill bits for this uh, installation. I believe a half inch and a three ace. Um, came with a leak stop valve. This is actually a really clever little thing. So when this valve is up, the water flow is stopped and it's got these little very absorbent pad blocks that you put in here and you push this back down and if those get wet, they start to expand like one of those firework snakes and it'll shut off the water flow to the RO, which is pretty clever. Uh, filter wrenches. There is a water tap in device here, which I'll show you. That'll be one of the first things that we actually install here. I've heard from some of the reviewers that it's not the greatest quality, so we'll have to see. Uh, did come with some Teflon tape, which we will use judicious use of. Looks like it came with some O-rings, so I'll have to Actually, look at the instruction to make sure we're not missing anything. But uh, really, one of the first things is going to be just unpacking the filter housings, screwing them into the manifold, and uh, then we'll probably get this mounted so we can actually find a decent spot for it. And then the water tank as well. So this is a storage tank. It's pretty big. Um, if you have the luxury like me of actually having an unfinished basement right below the kitchen, you may elect to just order some more of this hose and actually move some of this equipment down below to maintain your sink space. But either way, that's kind of the gist of what it includes. Pretty simple system. So I've cleaned out underneath my sink. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is move this back a little bit, lift it up a little bit just to give us clearance for the pipes. Uh, and then I'm going to just make sure there's a roughly even amount of space on all sides of it. And I'm going to mark right up in here with a Sharpie. And then I'm going to put some screws in there. And apparently Modi is very confused. He's never been under here before. So that's my plan. Let's get to it. That was definitely one of the best uses of this right angle drill I've ever had. <laughs> There we have it. Screwed most of the way in, but enough where we can still get all of these fittings. Um, so our water feed's gonna be coming in here. This will be going to our drain saddle. That's gonna be going to the water tank. And then I believe on this side, yep, yeah, there we go, the faucet. So luckily that actually faces up. So I can just pull this little quick clip off right here, which I might need a screwdriver to help with. Pull that out. Um, and yeah, we should be able to, I'm gonna just hook that in first so I can install it and run that cord up there later. 
So I've actually uh, just turned off the water to the hot and cold. I'm going to be tapping into the cold. I'm going to be a little bit careful because this is pex and it's shark bite, which is okay. Um, but I'm going to be pulling off this 3 8 pipe fitting right here. And I'm going to be adding their little takeoff valve to this directly. So as I mentioned before, that's the smaller 3 8 So we've got to do a couple things. This is actually kind of ingenious how they lay this out. So it's got 3 8 on one side, half on the other. And they give you an adapter. So if you've got half inch, you move it to one side. If you've got 3 8 you've got the other. And I'm a little bit worried about that O-ring in there, but this should be pipe thread. So probably not a problem. But since this is 3 8 I'm going to be putting the adapter in the big side. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to want to wrap some Teflon tape around it. Um, the key to this stuff is if you're screwing the fitting in this way, you want to wrap the tape in the opposite direction. So I put the tape on the threads here and I would wind it back toward me. I'd probably do two or three wraps and then screw this in until it's snug. Um, since it is metal on both ends, you can go tight, but it's pipe thread, so once it seals, it seals. Um, after that, we will Teflon tape the fitting there, the valve. Same deal here. And then after that, we will also Teflon tape, well, I guess we could do it right now, uh, the 3 8 fitting on this as well for, uh, I don't have it down here on the ground with me right now, but the actual feed fitting that will go eventually right up to here. So this is what we have going on. Teflon tape there, so that'll seat in here. I'm a little worried about that O-ring. Uh, Teflon tape between the reducer, I guess increaser, and then also on this end here. So there we have it, faucets back up here. This is all in line. I'm gonna leave the water shut off for right now. Um, I'm going to next take off the little quick disconnect here and not lose it. And I'm going to cut a piece of hose to come out of here loop around where it's out of the way, and then get the fitting, and actually get it popped right in here. Here is our fitting. Lovely, it's actually already been pre-wrapped with PTFE. Sorry about the videography. Um, and there's no clip on it, so we'll be able to just, you, you pull down on this little collar, this white thing, and then you can pull the caps right out, which is pretty nice. So I'm gonna screw this in gently here, Sorry. <laughs> May turn into a two-handed affair, but... And this is plastic, so be gentle. That should be plenty. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab the red hose. It's all color-coded. And uh, I'm gonna see how much length I need. And that stuff you cut with a razor blade, and I'll show you how to do that. So as you can see, got it in, and I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit of slack, and I'll probably end up zip tying up there as well. But down here, I'm gonna wanna cut it off right around where my fingertips are. So now, the plan is here, take your utility blade, which I've got right there, and cut flat down, and the thing needs to be perpendicular, it needs to be nice. So there we go, nice perpendicular cut. And we can simply, preferably with two hands, shove that thing into the quick disconnect and then put this back on and then grab one out of your uh, service bag here, buddy. He's helping. Grab one of those and slide it in right there. Next up is the drain saddle. Uh, if you've got a disposal like me, you're gonna wanna go somewhere on here, but I would recommend right around there. What I'm gonna do now is just generically take my Sharpie and mark. You want a little bit of an upward angle on it too, and you could even do straight up and down uh, if you can get your drill in there. But uh, this is usually pretty easy to handle. So just mark it out, make a big enough hole where water can get out of there, but not a huge, huge hole. And then when you're installing it, you'll actually want to pop the center out of this foam gasket. Uh, I don't, yes, actually you do. So you'll stick that to the pipe with the sticky side around your drilled hole, and then you'll put the saddle flange on it. 
This is the back side. The nuts go in the back side <laughs> and screws in through the front. Snug it down, doesn't need to be crazy. It's all plastic, so you don't want to break it. So there's the hole. Be very careful, go really slow. You do not want to hit through both sides of the pipe. Now, I'm just gonna take the backer off of this very carefully. And we are going to go ahead and apply it to the pipe. Then we line that thing up and the, the, uh, the instructions actually say to use a small drill bit just to make sure that that stays lined up in there. But I'm just gonna wing it, put the back side of the saddle valve on and tighten her down. So as you can see, straight through, we're looking good. Uh, now the drain, I believe is going to be what color, black, black pipe. So go from there over to this little guy. Remember to pull the quick disconnect out and, uh, excuse me, <laughs> pull the quick disconnect out, pull the plug out, uh, before you try to push the hose in. And if you do need to cut it, make sure you are using your utility knife, preferably one sharper than mine. Uh, quick, I forgot, the uh, the stopper valve in your water feed. You're going to want to do that. <laughs> um, hopefully you didn't cut your hose too short to get your uh, input. The input does go closer to the, um, the actual holder here. The output's on the far side. If you did, um, just use a little bit of your leftover whatever other color hose to go from your feed over to here. And remember to release these fittings, all you have to do is pull the clip out and then push down on the white collar and then you'll be able to pull the hose out. So make sure you have this installed. Uh, unwrap one of these guys, throw it in that little basin, slip this back down and it will turn on your water flow. Okay, so back to the drain. You can see I've got it all clipped in here. Got to run around and over clipped in there as well. So making some progress. Next up, we will uh, we'll get the tank installed and get that line up there. It's the yellow one. And this is our tank fitting. So the tank will be the last thing we need the PTE, PTFE tape for. So that should be fine. And it's also our yellow hose. So there we have it. Tank valve is on. It is, I believe that's actually currently in the open position, which is fine. And snuck it all the way through, pegged it up in there. Next up is going to be our uh, faucet handle. So that's going to be right over there. And I have to decide what side of the sink I would like to put this on. A lot more room over here than over by the disposal. So I think I'll probably go on this side. <laughs> So there we have her on the bottom, there we have her on the top. Nice, smooth action. Uh, next step is going to be, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but you're going to take your pipe and you're going to feed it through the back side of bah, this fitting right here. And once it's through there, you're going to slip this collar on there too. And what this collar does is it actually wedges the pipe between the inside diameter of that thread and the back of this collet right here. And it's a compression fitting, so it seals the water that way. So you don't want to torque that down a fair bit, but really it's plastic again, so don't ramrod it. Um, when you're actually torquing the faucet itself down, you can, you can use a good amount of force there. That's all metal. There we go, looks good. The only other thing I wanted to mention is the back side of the RO. I guess the left side of the manifold. Jeez, it's crowded in here. That fitting right there, make sure that red hose is already on the manifold. Just make sure you pull it down and clip it in. So again, that's just on the back side here. The hose is tucked in. It actually goes to this canister right here. So that's separate from the feed hose. That goes down to our valve here. 
on the instructions it actually shows us using a white tube from the valve to the RO but it doesn't really matter what color tube you use I'm going red is feed yellow is tank black is drain blue is spout so uh, this is pretty much good I'm gonna just double check everything I think we're good I do have a spare fitting I don't remember exactly where that went, but there are two different ways you can attach the faucet. Here's the other one. Um, this one's fine too if you want to do all quick connects. I'll save this certainly, but I prefer the compression fitting, so I went with the compression fitting. I don't know why they give you options, but uh, next up I think we'll be turning water on and testing it out. So the startup procedure, oh no, I've already got a leak. Where is it coming from? Uh oh. Almost looks like it's coming from my shark bite valve. Yeah, so I had a leak down here, just wasn't quite tight enough. So I tightened that up. Uh, so we're still filling with the valve on the tank closed and the RO handle open. It says wait up to 10 minutes for that water to go. Close the handle and allow pressure to build. Okay. So I guess I'll go through the sequence, but I'm pretty sure it's literally just let it build up a couple times, drain it out a couple times just to cleanse it. So after you stop hearing noises, I guess it's time to open the valve on your tank and then wait and check for leaks again. And then you do the cycle, it looks like three, six to eight times you want to cycle all of the water in the system out in the next 24 hours before you use it. And check daily for leaks during the first week of usage. Oh well, not too bad.